with it. I'm gonna. And now it's recorded, so we're ready to go. Um, I was hoping this morning that I can share with all of you a little bit about the New Mexico Minority Business Development Agency. And in particular, because it's a coming back to life agency that's funded through the US Department of Commerce. And I'll go through all those details, but it's really a resource uh, for you, for the community. And we wanna make sure that as many folks and business owners that are minority know about the service. So if you're a minority owned business that's on the call today, fabulous. Then we can you know, share a little bit of how we can support you. If you're not, but you know of other minority owned companies, then you can share with them this great news. So again, I'm Gabriela Marcus. I am here in Albuquerque right now at my home because there was some crazy snow that happened in Albuquerque last night. Um, so today I'm gonna start showing a short video. It's about a minute about the Minority Business Development Agency. So give me one second. We will do that. And then we can start with the presentation. We're the Minority Business Development Agency, more commonly known as MBDA. For more than three decades, we have funded programs that deliver business development services to the nation's minority-owned businesses. You made it here, and you're ready for the next level, to dream bigger and to achieve more. We are where businesses come to grow. Through our national network of MBDA business centers, we provide customized business developed services that help your company expand its customer base, enter new markets, and gain greater access to capital and contracting opportunities. Our expert consultants will help you build scale and capacity through a wide range of services, including bid preparation, loan packaging, alternative growth strategies, teaming arrangements, market research, and export readiness assessments. As minority-owned firms continue to expand the U.S. economy, strengthen local communities, and support greater job creation, our centers will be there to help. We make it our business to help you cultivate yours. Elevate your success. You are ready, and so are we. MBDA, where businesses come to grow. Thank you. So that's a very general overview about the work of the Minority Business Development Agency, which as you can tell is funded by the US Department of Commerce. So I'm now gonna share my PowerPoint presentation and then we can go over it. And if there's questions, feel free to put those questions in the chat and I'm sure Chris can help us navigate through that. <clears throat> Okay, I'm assuming everyone can see it. And let me make it bigger. Hmm. You know what? I, I want to be able to see my other part of the screen. So I'm just going to do it like this. Okay. So this is a little bit about the Minority Business Development Agency. And yeah, very good. So what are we? So the, we are an agency of the US Department of Commerce um, that is focused on supporting US jobs and promoting jobs and helping these minority owned companies to grow in its competitiveness in the global market. So what's really exciting is, and maybe if you saw in the video, you could have noticed that there was little dots when there was the whole map of the country. There was less business centers. And then this year uh, in July, it was announced uh, an additional, uh, I believe seven centers. So now we have a total of 36 business centers across the country. And what's really exciting about that is that New Mexico has been chosen as one of the states that has a minority business development agency for the past many decades. For some states, it's like something completely new. For example, for Louisiana, which is really shockingly to me, it's the first time that they're having a business center like this. 
So the way that it works is U.S. Department of Commerce and MBDA, I'm sure they do some kind of research to figure out what are the states that could take most advantage that have a large number of minority-owned companies. And that would make sense to have this resource available to support these businesses to grow. So the work that we do is we provide uh, businesses with technical assistance that focus on those three areas. Actually, it's four areas. So access to capital, so supporting businesses to navigate the many options for lending, for grants, putting lending packages together. We support them with contract opportunities, and that's a really a big one that we focus a lot of our energies is helping businesses uh, take the next step and secure a local county, state, federal contract so that they can grow on their business. So both on the government side, but then also on the commercial side. So having relationships, for example, with Intel, where they can secure a contract. <clears throat> and then uh, our third focus is helping businesses uh, reach new markets. So for example, they've been doing work here in New Mexico and they wanna grow into Texas, for example. And then through our network of MBDAs, we can support them get access into this other market and then, <clears throat> or even exporting. We even have some MBDA business centers that focus solely on exporting. And then capacity building engagements, which is that last piece, uh, which is really the one-on-one -on -one, uh, consulting, the technical assistance that we have through many of our webinars that I'll share more in just a few minutes. So what do we do? We focus and we work on behalf of the country's 11 million minority owned businesses to support their growth with the vision of creating an economy that uplifts all and strengthens the whole. So it's really amazing to see those numbers of 11 million minority owned companies that are here in our country. <clears throat> so this is our focus. So we like to make sure that this information is clear because we are a little bit different than from SBDC since they're through the Small Business Administration. So our focus is to support minority-owned companies, and those are listed here, uh, individuals who are African-American, Asian-American, Hasidic Jews, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, and Pacific Islanders. And our center focus in a few key industries that are listed on the slide, but they're not exclusive. So yes, we focus on you know, what's listed like advanced manufacturing, construction, healthcare, film and television, aerospace. But um, if there is another business who's minority owned, who makes sense to work with our, our center, we will be happy to work with them even though they're not on those in those sectors that are listed right there. Um, and this is a little bit of the numbers of the work of MBDA in the past uh, many decades, right? So currently there are 11 million minority owned businesses in the United States that employs over 6 million people and that generates uh, close to $2 trillion in annual revenue. And that's really why there is this focus from uh, the US Department of Commerce in supporting minority owned companies around the country. And this is a little bit of the work that I, I was just sharing, right? Our focus and what we do. So we do support with access to capital. So we make sure that we as a center, so it's myself and a few business advisors, we are well connected with you know, banks and lenders and when there's grant opportunities and we help the businesses have access to them, do warm introductions, sit with them with the bankers, you know, put their lending packages together so that they're ready to go to receive a loan or especially in the last couple of years with COVID when there were so many uh, grant opportunities through the federal government with PPP and IDLE and city grants that the businesses are ready to receive that um, and then also doing the reporting if necessary for that. Access to contracts, which is, you know, a lot of the focus, and I'll share a little bit more about what we do to support businesses with that. Um, you can see that in the past many years, MBDA, with all its business centers, has supported businesses just in 2019, uh, help secure over $3 billion in contracts, which is really amazing. And then uh, access to markets, so supporting businesses with exporting, uh, and then it says 
the agency has helped minority business enterprises facilitate more than 300 million in export transactions in fiscal year 2019. So the MBDA Business Center here in New Mexico offers services for in the category of access to contracts. So what we do is we help businesses make sure that they're ready to receive contracts. So one of the, the ways that we do that is <clears throat> we have a service that's called Govology, which I'll share the screen in a second, uh, which our clients and when I say clients, it just means that it's a minority-owned company that has revenues of half a million and above. And that's really key. So the US Department of Commerce wants to make sure that we're focusing on mid-sized companies. Um, so then they work with us, meaning that they fill out a form that has some basic information about the business. That way we know how to help them best as we're working closely. So one of the services that I was saying about contracting and training is that <clears throat> there is a a service called Govology, which I will share the screen in a second. And then businesses get to select any training that they like to watch and it's on demand. So they can watch it at two o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning since they're business owners. And I'm sure they're very busy with other activities in their day. And then they just put our code because each of those classes for an hour, it's $75. But with our code, as they are working with the New Mexico Minority Business Development Agency, they get to watch it for free. And there is no limitations of how many trainings they like to watch. What's really amazing about that service as well is that a lot of our businesses, we've realized that they're using it as a training tool. So for example, if they hire somebody new, perhaps they don't have all the time to spend training with that individual they can get, give that new employee access to Govology and then they can you know, be trained on their own and be ready to, to do all the work that they need to do. For example, if they're a business development officer. Another thing that we do as well to support businesses with access to contracts is we have a client bid opportunity so we have something that's called outreach systems, which are we can create a profile for our businesses and they will receive directly in their email opportunities related to their NAICS codes or keywords of the goods and services that the business receives. So it's something automatic that business owners don't have to spend all the time, right? Researching for opportunities. This just comes directly to their email that's matched with their commodity codes or NAICS codes and keywords of the services that they offer. A little bit more of the work that we do is we help businesses with certifications and registrations, we have with lending equity proposals, like I was mentioning, capital lending access, strategic planning and consulting and training. We do this through one-on-one -on -one consulting, providing connections to procurement officers in different agencies at different levels of government by group training, individual training through our software, which you can access at all hours. So I was just mentioning the biology. Uh, and by supporting teaming arrangements. So we've been doing that. We've really been focusing on that. So there's a lot of opportunities where there might uh, be a big project, um, but they need a lot of subcontractors, right, to do that work, for example. So we make sure that we have our businesses that can be connected with whoever's going to be the prime on that project so that they can, you know, submit a very uh, strong proposal and win that opportunity together. <clears throat> so this, for our center in particular, we wanted to make sure that we are not an isolated uh, technical assistance center to business owners in our region. So when we receive the funds from the US Department of Commerce to start operating, we wanted to make sure that we were connected with partners in the state of New Mexico. So we have a partnership with the Hispano Chamber of Commerce, and they actually put together uh, annually a procurement series. So it is a training over six weeks for two hours a week on Tuesday afternoons where business owners can put together their capability statements. They get to learn how to register for the different agencies, city, state, federal, PNM, you know, UNM, CNM, so that they can do work with them. It's a really great um, 
training and cohorts and the cohort for this year, they just finished in March and there's gonna be a second cohort that's gonna be doing this intensive training that's gonna be starting uh, early fall. So as soon as we have those dates, we'll make sure to share with the group. Similarly, Arrowhead at New, Me New Mexico State University also has a similar procurement series, but it's over four weeks two hours a week, and that one's going to start early June. So as soon as we have the registration open for that, we will share with all of you here so you can share with other individuals as well. And it's going to be a really great, again, four-week training, two hours a week for the month of June to help businesses put their capability statement, thinking about marketing, thinking about costs, thinking about how to get that first contract or grow in the number of contracts that they're offering. Another of our New Mexico strategic partners is West, which you might be familiar. It's a nonprofit that supports uh, business owners. And what they've been doing in collaboration with the Minority Business Development Agency is providing a monthly workshop on the topic. And it's uh, three themes that rotate. So one of them is how to get your certification. So your 8A, Women Owned, Hub Zone certifications. The other webinar is on the topic of <clears throat> how to get a contract with the New Mexico state. So a procurement agency, right? And then the third one is how to get your first federal contract. So they do kind of like a series every month and that's also in collaboration with the Minority Business Development Agency. Um, and then I have here um, Economic Development Department with the city of Albuquerque. So those are our operator. Uh, which doesn't mean that we're limited to Albuquerque in any means. It just means that that department with the city of Albuquerque helps us to do our financing, our marketing and whatnot. And then another, I'm so sorry, another strategic part of that for whatever reason is not listed on this part presentation is the African-American Chamber of Commerce. And actually they are having a great panel next week on Thursday at 5 p.m on uh, they're gonna bring together minority owned. So these are African-American uh, CEOs to, to speak on the topic of leadership within their companies. So I'll make sure to send all over that information as well. And all of these resources that we're offering in partnership with these organizations, they're all free of charge. They're welcome for everyone. Even if you're not minority owned, we really wanna make sure that all businesses have those resources available. And especially during this time where you can join anything online, it's a great opportunity to join and learn. Before before we start doing things in person, I don't know when, maybe summer or fall. Okay. So here there's like a, a little bit of, of information. So about the agency itself. So the Minority Business Development Agency, you can see on the right, was created in 1969. At that time, there were 90,000 minority owned firms in the country, which does not seem like a lot at all. And here it's talking about the growth of those numbers <clears throat> and so here's like a little bit of the milestones of the minority business development agency so in 1969 you know the administration creates this office to support minority owned businesses in 79 it becomes a minority business development agency and in 2021 which was just this past year it became a permanent agency. So what's really exciting about that is before that, every year, all the business centers across the country, obviously we're making sure that we're tracking the information, right? How many businesses we're supporting with lending, how many businesses we're supporting with contracting. And then we the, <clears throat> the agency in DC would then share these numbers with Congress and make sure that there was additional funding appropriated year after year, kind of to showcase. Now that it's a permanent agency, we are here to stay, which is really exciting. And then funding will probably increase, which means that uh, there's even a conversation of creating rural minority-owned businesses, sorry, rural minority business development agencies across the country to support even more businesses throughout the state and, and the region in rural areas. Um, <clears throat> so that's fabulous. And that's a little bit here about numbers of, you know, employees and number of those businesses in the different ethnic groups. So physically, our offices are located in Albuquerque, 
in the Barella's neighborhood in the Hispano Chamber of Commerce. Um, this photo is of our very small press. <laughs> it wasn't a press conference, which is our uh, open ribbon cutting in December, 2020. Obviously there was not a lot of us there. There's like four of us, uh, but we're having a bigger one in April, hopefully now during COVID. But even though we are, our offices are located there, of course, with COVID, we serve anyone in the state of New Mexico. And actually, we don't actually, sorry, have any boundaries, geographic limitations. So we can meet and we do have businesses that we work with in Arizona and Texas and Nevada in Virginia, right? We wanna make sure that we're serving everyone and especially with the area er, era of COVID and online connections, we're able to connect with businesses anywhere in the country. <clears throat> and this is a little bit of my contact information. Um, my email has changed, but you can still send an email to that email and it will go directly to us. I would highly recommend going to our website because that lists a lot of the activities and the events that we are engaged in. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna share my screen again uh, about two different things. One of them is Govology that I was mentioning right now. So just so you guys have a sense of what it is. Give me one second. Okay. So this is what I was mentioning, right? So this is a service called Govology. We do have a landing page that has information from MBDA, but you can also just go to govology.com. For example, you can go to any of these webinars and classes. So let's see. Oh, I wanna learn about whatever it might be, marketing, right? <clears throat> so then you can pick any of these classes and you see they all have a, a cost of $75. But let's say that if you want to work with us, you would, you would then pick and then you would put the code that we would share with you over here. And then the grand total would be zero, which is uh, very nice. The other thing that I wanted to show is if you just go to our website, so nmmbda.com. <clears throat> this is our website. And I would, if you want more information, you can always go to the inquiry form and fill out the information. If you do want to be added to our newsletter that we send out about one or twice a month, so it's not much, but it has a lot of information about upcoming events, not just from MBDA, but events about from the region as a whole. Um, it also has information about grant opportunities, it has information about just opportunities, for example, that the city of Albuquerque is trying to buy this one service or Sandia, whatever it might be. You can just subscribe to our newsletter here, first, last name, and email, and then we would uh, keep you updated on this newsletter. The other resource is through our list of events. We try our best to make sure that it's updated. You see right there what we're doing on right now. Uh, but then there's also other a lot of other grades webinars and information from MBDA, but then also from the network of activities across. So that's from the Department of Energy. There's this great New Mexico Department of uh, Transportation Opportunity Fair that's gonna happen on April 13th, right? Another contracting uh, series. So this is from West that I was just mentioning, those three. So anyways, you can always come here and check information. So I see some questions. Let me see, Hispano Chamber of Commerce, are they in English or in Spanish? Great question. So I will go back to the slide in a second. So for the procurement series from the Hispano Chamber of Commerce is in English, but the Hispano Chamber of Commerce actually has a whole separate training and I forgot what it's called, but it's all in Spanish. So for that individual that had a question, if you wanna email me directly, I'm gonna, put also my information in the chat, uh, then I can contact you and give you information about that full-on Spanish course that the Hispano Chamber of Commerce has. Um, sorry, and then I'll put my slide back. Definitely will do that. And I'll also add it to the chat. So I don't know if there's any other questions. Gabriela, uh, would you like these slides to be sent out as a PDF to all the attendees? Yes, but you know, uh, yes, that happy to do that. That sounds great. I'm just gonna edit some things on the slide 
and then I can send it to you, Chris, so you can share it with the group. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Of course. And I'll also add my information here. Uh, was there a different question? I saw a hand going up, but maybe that was just going down. Oh, Ricardo Romero. Fabulous, Ricardo. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. Yes, exactly. The Hispano Chamber Procurement Series is very helpful. They go in depth. And I think it's nice actually that it goes over several weeks. That way there's a little bit of time to digest all the information because it can be a lot of information. I'm kind of assuming that Ricardo felt the same since he said that he wants to do it a second time. Uh, it is true. It is a lot of information. They bring on a lot of different agencies to be a part of the presentations and share how to do work with them. So one thing that I did want to share as well, another, you know, we have many services that our center can offer, like the one-on-one -on -one consulting, but one thing that we've started maybe a year ago at this point is we have something that's called the Spotlight Series. So once a month, we bring a large anchor institution. So for example, yesterday we had New Mexico Gas Company. So we have usually their procurement manager, who is that individual who's doing all the purchases, right? And who knows what are the opportunities that are going to be coming up. And they speak directly to our business owners and they share, you know, this is how you register. These are the things that we're going to be looking at. These are the upcoming opportunities. And then our MBDA clients can also share, hi, my name is Gabriella. I own a landscaping company. And this is a type of work that I've done in the past. That way the procurement officer is like seeing them, learning about their work. And typically we then we obviously exchange information with everyone and it's a great opportunity to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with the procurement officer. So we've had community of Central New Mexico, Central Community College, so CNM, we've had UNM, we've had so many Sandia. Uh, for next month, we're gonna have New Mexico State. The following month in May, we will have Kirtland Air Force Base. For June, we will have U.S. Corps of Engineers. So we have many of these large institutions because we want to make sure that business owners have that connection and they don't feel overwhelmed with the process. Because of course, you can find this information on the website, right? It's all there, but sometimes it can feel really overwhelming. It's a great opportunity to answer questions. So thank you, Ricardo, for your your vouching of the program from the Hispano Chamber. I'll also open if there's any other questions and I'll add my information here. Gabriel, since we're in an intimate group today, if you wanna ask a question or speak, would you raise your hand for me? And I'll allow you to speak. Chantel, you are muted, so unmute and then you can speak. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chantal Elizabeth Beretusa. Uh, I would like to let you know that I've been following, number one, the MBDA from Florida for quite a while and uh, Hawaii. This is the first time I heard that there's an MBDA in New Mexico, therefore I'm glad uh, to, uh, to participate. I, I have a certification certificate from a court uh, a program from uh, Florida uh, and also from Hawaii. Also from Hawaii. But my question is, since I'm with New Mexico PTAC, there are certification to take, but I knew from the other MBDA, there are some MBE or some uh, specification, a specified uh, certification to take from MBDA. What are the ones that you provide the new PTAC doesn't? Or yeah. um, so can make certification for government contracting opportunity? Okay, sounds great. Well, I'm glad to hear that you were connected in Florida, Chantal. So I would love to talk to you more closely just to even learn what are, because all MBDA business centers across the country, they're similar, right? but they also have their unique programs. So I would love to learn, you know, from your experience in Florida. Um, so certifications, I think that's always your question in particular. So the state of New Mexico does not have a specific minority enterprise certification. There used to exist one from the city of Albuquerque many years ago, but it doesn't have one the state of New Mexico. Um, the New Mexico Department of Transportation does have a disadvantaged business enterprise certification, uh, which kind of like overlaps with that, right? So if it's like a socially and disadvantaged 
uh, economically business, they do have a certification and we can help you through that process. But of course, those are businesses that are trying to do work with the New Mexico Department of Transportation. So I can send that information. Um, the, another certification that the state of New Mexico sometimes does accept, it's called the Minority Business Enterprise, which comes from the Minority Supplier Diversity Council. So this is a national organization that they have chapters across the country that provide the certification. So the certification goes really in depth to make sure that the business owner is a minority owned. Um, they, um, they look at you know birth certificates, but that certification is in particular for private agencies. So for example, it's a certification that Toyota will care about, Costco, Coca-Cola, it's not a certification that government agencies uh, really take a look into. So I don't know if that was your question, but I'm also happy to- know, you know. That was helpful, but uh, the difference with the tax certification oh. and yours. Yes, so we you don't- provide the same? Mm -hmm. Are those the same? You provide the same or there are some typical that MBDA provide that they don't? Yes, great question. So PTAC, obviously amazing organization that provide a lot of support, helping businesses, you know, get registered with SAM, looking at opportunities at different government contract levels. So some of the work that we do definitely overlaps, yes, but we focus specifically on minority owned companies. And then we can also do other work supporting, for example, contracts with commercial organizations. And we have all these like different workshops that uh, PTAC does not, but then PTAC also has its own workshops as well. So there is definitely a lot of overlap. Both of our organizations are here to support businesses grow. There is no kind of in the same sense that a business can work with SBDC, they can work with PTAC, and the same company can also work with MBDA since none of our agencies have a cost, right? So you can take advantage of all three or just one, however you'd like. So none of those organizations give certifications in particular, but we just help businesses grow to the next level. Thank you very much for your approach. And my last con uh, point is uh, the MedWeek. Is there a way I can have uh, access to that again? It was great that I didn't have a chance to take notes because the webinar was out there. If you can help me to have access again to some of the to the webinar of MedWeek. It was really great. great yeah, talk. of course, of course. Feel free to send me an email. So what Chantal is referring to is uh, the MBDA. They offer this huge conference once a year. It's usually in September for a week. It's called MedWeek, so Minority Enterprise Development Week. And they have speakers, like high caliber speakers um, on all different topics. Uh, so yes, I most of the information from the September conference is still online. So I can make sure to share that with you and whoever else would like access to it. Uh, and then as soon as their registration for this coming year for September, I'll make sure to share that as well. I'm so and glad I, you're still connected, Chantal. That's fabulous. I have an announcement next week on the 31st. I've been selected to be a speaker at the International, uh, Nice Bite International is a trade association uh, to speak about trade. And uh, for the first time, they have a subject about Africa. And I've been selected to speak about African Growth Opportunity Act. There is a Prosper Africa uh, Trade and Investment uh, of uh, the Baden uh, 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 program uh, that they have a uh, Prosper uh, Build Back Better. And uh, for 45 minutes, that I'll send you the information. I am yeah. scared, but uh, I want to share that with you before I, 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 I present next week. I think MBDA can do better for me. And I'm glad to have an MBDA in my state. Yes, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on that. And please Thanks. send that information. I would love to, to see that. Gabriela, do you, would you, can we turn it over to Indy uh, Vallejos? And then if you don't mind answering questions uh, by typing answers in, and then if we have time, we'll pick it up again. Of course, yeah. Thank you. I'm do I need that. to do anything or just? You don't. You just need to be you. And Mr. Vallejos, if you want to share your slides and your screen, we'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. And uh, this is my screen. Share. Um, and can you everybody see the Yes, it looks good. All right. All right. So, good.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm the uh, director for the U.S. Commercial Service uh, in New Mexico. Uh, this office is brand new here in the in the state. It's we're going on our fifth week. It's been uh, vacant for a really long time, and as uh, MBDA, the federal government has um, revisited. Um, um, the the portfolio and ways on how to expand uh, business here in the U.S. Um, and we were happy to receive funding to open this business. And and uh, our main goal is to just help businesses uh, export. And um, like I said, uh, this is the U.S. Commercial Service. And I'm gonna go next slide. So it's pretty simple. Um, let, let me start before um, before I get it, dive into my presentation. I, I just wanted to kind of explain. At least this is how I start understanding the the different mechanisms and and departments and agencies that the U.S. government has. Um, so that there is the Department of Commerce, who uh, the minority MBDA uh, also belongs to. Um, also, there is the uh, department within the Department of Commerce. There is the International Trade Administration (ITA), as most people know know it. And below that, that's where we we where we are, the U.S. Commercial Service. And our mission is pretty simple. It's it's um, to help uh, U.S. businesses export. And the reason why is because if you export, that means you are adding uh, more more income to your state, to your community, creating jobs and improving livelihoods as a result of that. Um, so we've, after, throughout the years, we found out that companies that export grow faster. Um, and also they're less likely to, to go out of business. You're expanding your portfolio, you're expanding your, your clientele outside of the US. So the chances are that you are able to with stand economic shocks um, through like we've experienced um, the pandemic, the, the war between Russia and Ukraine and, and many other things that businesses um, suffer as a result of, of uh, events. So, so we're here to, like I said, um, more than 70% of the world's purchasing power is, is outside the US. So, so we're here to help um, businesses think globally, uh, think outside your, your, your box, think outside of New Mexico, think outside of your community. And let's, let's go and seek those opportunities outside. It's, it's, it's a very competitive world. It's, it's, not, um, it's hard, but not, not impossible. And uh, like Gabriela has um, mentioned, there's different resources here in the US that can prepare you to that next level. The way I see it is um, small businesses and medium-sized businesses have a lot of resources, which Gabriela has um, described uh, really well, that can prepare you to this next step. And the next step for you is to come to the US Commercial Service and express interest in, in the export. Let's say, and we're in New Mexico, uh, because I'm, a, I'm the only one in the office, I cover all sectors um, from technology to produce to services, so everything. Um, and we come and help you uh, and give you advice counseling as to get you what we call export ready. And if you are not ready, we oftentimes will refer you to Gabriela's offices to help you uh, improve your business acumen to improve your business's uh, processes in order to be for your business to be um, uh, ready for, for export. So, so what's different about the US Commercial Service? Um, the US Commercial Service um, is, is all over the world. It has about 150 offices in about 70 countries. And also in the US, we have about 100 plus offices in the, in the US. 
And uh, in those offices within the U.S., we call them field offices. And we work very close hand in hand with the different embassies uh, around the world. We have uh, what we call the foreign, uh, foreign commercial service officers. And also under them, we have the locally employed staff who are very knowledgeable, very experienced uh, individuals uh, within the, the, the region or, or the country where they're located. So they give us a very uh, thorough, um, an expert level uh, market intelligence of, 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 uh, of anything, of, of a particular sector that you're interested in, in any country around the world. So if you have a product that uh, perhaps it, um, you've noticed in your website that you're getting a lot of tractions from, from I don't know, let's say Argentina, Peru, uh, Brazil, or even Japan, Africa, you know, uh, we can do a quick counseling as to what are the next steps for that. So yeah, like I said, helping you export to the to outside of the US, outside of your New Mexico into a foreign country is, is what we do. So some of the things that we we uh, what we do, like I was trying to get uh, allude to is is that we um, have that convening power. Uh, our because we are attached to the US embassy uh, a lot of businesses are readily available to us. We can go to any business around the world and, and uh, express interest of, of, of uh, doing business with them. And they will readily open their doors to us and, and, and have a conversation. So a lot of times what we do is, let's say businesses... Um, have an interest in exporting to Japan. Let's say, let's use an example. And what we do is we counsel you. We counsel you. We we make sure that you have a product. Make sure you have a service. Make sure that you your business is is in good standing. Make sure that your product, your services, if needed, has an intellectual property. Make sure that you have. A, your patent, uh, if needed. Um, just make sure that everything is in place before you export, um, because we don't want you to fail. We want you to succeed. So we, we, we wanna make sure that, that you're export ready. Your business is there, you have a website, you have um, banks, um, accounts uh, to do transactions and, and everything. So we, we, we make sure that you, that you have all these things in place, so we we exp we counsel you, and if you don't, then we we oftentimes will will refer refer you to to the business centers, development centers, um, as Gabriela described, for them to help you get to that point, and that's the partnership that that we're um, we we intend to do. Uh, so we provide, and so we do export counseling market intelligence, business ma matchmaking, and commercial diplomacy, which hopefully we don't get to because um, I will explain in a bit what, what that means. So in, in the export counseling, as I was explaining, uh, we, we, um, we provide you uh, customized, reliable information from that specific country. And we help you with uh, strat strategize financing um, and e-commerce uh, counseling. We have experts in in the in, within the U.S. Commercial Service that can that can that can give you those advices um, and help your your business get 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 export ready. Um, we have the e-commerce e innovation lab that that will. Uh, give you an overview of your website and advise you and counsel you and tell you these are the things that you need to do uh, to have to be export ready. Maybe perhaps your your website is not um, um, doesn't have uh, maybe the inquiry forms um, are too long, too cumbersome. Uh, maybe 
you don't have uh, 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 your phone number is not international ready. Sometimes um, it, it just says uh, 505, it doesn't have the plus one. Um, a lot of times when international people are trying to get a hold of you, um, they're trying to figure out how to make an inter international call. So make sure it's, 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 um, it's ready and easy for them. Uh, as you know, there is in everybody around the world are now, for instance, are using WhatsApp, um, things like that. So we make those type of recommendations for you to go back and, 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 um, and fix those on your own. Um, one thing that I don't have here is the rural, it's called RAISE. raise. Uh, this rural um, working group uh, focuses only on, on, on rural businesses um, around the country and, it, and it's available to, 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 to uh, New Mexico. Um, it's, a, it's a service that the that uh, that the commercial service offers, and again, it's the same thing. We take a look at at your 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 business and provide counseling counseling and advice on how to make your 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 business ready, expert ready. And and the only difference with this is that if we just give extra attention to businesses in the rural areas of, of our state. Um, market intelligence. Uh, this is something that I used to do prior to my work. I used to work for the uh, Foreign Agriculture Service, um, uh, part of the uh, Department of Agriculture in, uh, in Washington, D.C. And it's the same thing approach that the U.S. Commercial Service has. We have what we call the posts, um, offices around the world that they gather information um, from that country, and we we put them into one one area, one section, one sector, one page, and and also we have uh, other sources um, that 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 help us gather that that information. Um, other sectors in, within the embassy, the economic section, uh, even the foreign agriculture service, they all gather um, specific information, and we put it into one place. And we provide that type of information to, to, to our our clients. Uh, we provide customized market research um, for, let's say, you have a salsa or, or or a technology that that you want to export to a specific country. We custom we do a customized research on on that specific um, uh, sector. And we looked at we look at the, what are the practices of that country, what are the market trends, what are the regulations, what what trade agreements are in place for us to take advantage of. Um, we look at distributors, um, logistics, how how to get your your service product from New Mexico to that country, um, and also we we do an initial market check, you know before even you think about getting to that country, let's see if it's viable before we do, you know. Um, and even we do a international company profile. If you have a company uh, that you're thinking of, we can, we can do a company profile. We can vet that company for you um, um, before, before you get, before you, before you uh, start the communication. We wanna make sure that that company has uh, is legitimate, has the finance, has the resources for 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 them to engage with you, um, and um, we make we try to make it as safe as possible. Uh, business matchmaking that you've heard a lot of uh, um, terms like trade missions, uh, trade shows. Um, we we organize those those as well. We do a single company promotion. Like I've have, I have clients that are tar came, have come to me and said, um, I have a, a company in, in Japan, two companies in Japan. And I, they're, I've seen interest, they've contacted me and I wanted to, to verify, uh, to establish that, that communication um, further. 
So we would do what we would do is we would um, vet those company. We would look at look at their. We would do our research on the company, who they are, what they produce, what's their are, are they legitimate? Are they are they part of the sanction list, the U.S. sanction list? Um, and um, are they are they are they ready to do business? And similarly, um, on our end, we also vet the company. We want to make sure, like I said before, we want to make sure that you're export ready. So that let's say if that company says yes, I want I don't know a thousand prototypes, a thousand um, uh, of those products. Or let's say this, they say, we have a multi-million dollar uh, project and want, I want your service. Uh, we want to make sure that you are able to provide the service. You have the human capacity, the human resources to do those services, the, 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 the factory, the plant, the office to, to, to be able to get it, to engage with them. So we, we, we want to vet uh, our companies in the U.S. as well. Uh, it's only fair for, for us to uh, vet them and vet uh, ourselves as well, so that when you go to have a, a meeting, it's, it's, it's a serious meeting and, and nobody's time is being wasted. Uh, so we, we offer an honest feedback on, on, with that regards. And if you're not ready, again, we'll send you, send you back to, to Gabriela's office, or the SBDC um, or other organizations that are, that are available in your area to help you get to that to that point. Um, we also help uh, feature. Uh, we have a directory overseas. Uh, we help you feature your your services, your product abroad. Uh, we do. Uh, uh, we have gold services um, that we that we provide we give to our to our clients and uh, trade missions uh, uh, sector trade missions that that are always organized around the world. Um, we just came back um, from a Middle East uh, Africa trade mission uh, where about a hundred plus companies uh, within the U.S. Um, participated there. Um, and and apparently they had most of them had a really successful event, and it's the same process that we do. We vet our companies before they go. We vet those foreign companies before they uh, register to the to the events, making sure that they're ready to do business, making sure they're not part of the sanction list, making sure that they're legitimate and they're serious about um, doing business. So this is what I was I was um, just explaining about the trade events. Uh, we certified trade missions, um, trade show representation, um, the international buyer program, fairs. Um, we're we're really involved in the in international market um, around the world, and we're constantly. Um, um, being to me being sent uh, uh, notices about the different uh, events around the world and i'm here to try to connect you uh, businesses to those events um, first of all like i said again make sure vet you first make sure that you're ready make sure that this is a, a, a an event that you want to invest in and that you have the high um, Probabilities of, of being successful once you once you att attend these um, these events. Uh, the one that I was just talking about that they just came back is called the Trade Winds. It's an annual event. Um, we just created a, a minorities um, a trade mission. Um, so next year we're gonna. Um, this year is the first time we're 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 doing it. It's mostly it's going to be in in Italy, Spain, and um, Italy, Spain, and Germany, I think. And these are, are for minority uh, businesses involved in, in in technology. And next year it's going to be um, uh, we're, we're going to do it. It's going to be an annual thing. So if you're interested, let me know. I'll. I'll um, 
I'll put you in the list or, or as soon as that becomes available, I'll, 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 I'll let you know. So this is the this is another service that we offer and and um, hopefully we don't come to this to this to this level, but um, the US uh, helps businesses troubleshoot any issues that you may face abroad. Like if you have uh, embargoes or for some reason your product is stalled in the in the port, this is something that I used to do in, at USDA. Uh, a, government, a US government official will go to the port and try to figure out why why our product is 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 at the port and not being released and and if and if it comes to to uh and no reason and no scientific based um uh reason as to why it's being hold, held at the port then we would intervene and and go to the ministry in charge, or sometimes, depending on 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 how bad it is, we would the 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 ambassador would, would visit the, the prime minister or the president of the country to 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 do that. Or sometimes, um, if you're a consultant, you you bid a project in an X country, and you felt that um, your you provided the best service, the best. Um, the best uh, proposal, but you were unfairly um, treated. So we would take this case to, to the government and seek an explanation as to why um, you, your company was not selected. Um, so we do a, 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 a lot of things. And this is where, like I said before, the US commercial service um, uh, convening power comes into play where our foreign officers are in the country would would um, would go to the ministry in charge, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Commerce, or, or, or Finance, or whatever ministry is in charge of of, of of your sector, and we would try to get some answers and, and get some results and uh, and make sure that our companies are, are are treated fairly, according to the to the fair trade uh, uh, rules that we have with them. So, so that's this service. And also we do have a, a website where you can obtain a, a lot of information, trade.gov. Um, we have the research foreign markets. Um, you, can, your, you can do your own foreign uh, market analysis, uh, buyers, um, so it's it's a uh, it's a lot of information um, for you to play around and do your own research and try to find uh, a market for 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 your product or your service. Um, and and if you have any questions, this is this this can be overwhelming. If you have any questions, please don't don't hesitate to contact me, and I'll uh, and I'll help you navigate the, these issues. And like I said, I'm the director for the U.S. Commercial Service here in New Mexico, and um, and I'm here to help find those businesses that are that are ready to export. And if you're not ready, kind of uh, counsel you and and get you to that point. And, and that's 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 pretty much my job, what I do and what I will be doing uh, um, for the office. Um, as of right now, I'm in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I don't have an office yet. I'm still uh, looking for an office, um, but I can. Um, I can. I'm planning to do a, a state trip. Uh, probably go over to Farmington, to Shiprock, Taos, and other other um, uh, towns in New Mexico to visit. Um, and if you if you want to have a one on one conversation, please uh, don't hesitate to to contact me, and I will um, make sure to have time and visit you, um, and provide that that one on one um, service that 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 you need. And if I don't have that the answer, I for sure will find the answer someone within my my agency to to help us and get to that point.
So, and um, so this is this is it. And like I said, please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Please don't hesitate to contact Gabriela, the and your centers and your and, and your services around around your community. We're in Albuquerque in the state. They're here. All of us are here to 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 serve you and and in my case to make you uh, to connect you with a foreign market if that is what your business uh, intends to do. Um, and this is it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Indy, did you want these slides to go out on PDF to the attendees? Yeah, yeah, please, please. I will send Thank them you. out. Okay, I know we're at time. So I'll turn it over to uh, Carmen, if you wanna uh, say any last words. Yes, I would just like to thank our speakers. I really appreciate you taking the time to inform um, businesses in New Mexico about the opportunities that you have to share for their expansion. And Gabby and um, Indy, if you do come to Farmington, please let me know and I can hopefully set up some businesses for you to meet. Um, Cause I know that we have a lot of uh, needs in our communities. So I would love to do that. And uh, everybody else, please reach out to any of the three programs as we are here to assist your businesses to, uh, to grow or to get started. That's all I have, Chris. Thank you. Adrian, did you wanna say anything before we leave? He caught me off guard, Chris. Yeah, of course. Thank, thank you, uh, Gabriela, Indy, um, everybody from all of the programs. Thank you for presenting. And uh, as Carmen said, any of our small business owners, entrepreneurs, please reach out to any of the programs that are out there available to you um, from the state. I think Gabrielle mentioned that um, you don't have to just work with one program. In fact, um, I think Carmen can probably attest to this. The more programs that you use, the more successful that you're going to become. And, the, and we're all out here to help all of our small business owners. So please um, use all of your resources. Gabriela, Indy, thank you again for presenting to um, and in conjunction with the SBDC. Thank you all.